Hello and welcome to Ash of Gods Redemption, a turn-based RPG slash adventure game, but I don't know too much about it, so let's just get started. From the little I know, it should be quite cool, so yeah, let, let's just go with that. So we have two options, classic mode, recommended for all players, the ultimate gameplay experience, challenges, suffering and hardships await, or auto battle system. Uh, yeah. If you want to concentrate on the story, we'll see. We'll see how much we are into the fighting. <clears throat> Year 300, since Divine Retribution, the Spring Equinox. Unsolved mysteries are like an unquenched thirst. Premonitions of trouble to spur you to keep going. That was kind of <clears throat> quite unusual, that battle scene. The noobs just ran in and it actually worked out. Then they stabbed themselves, which resulted in them blowing up. And they were against some uh, heavy metal band. Damn. And their eyes went dark as well. What was that supposed to be? <clears throat> One thousand and two years since divine retribution. The end of winter. The Vale of Mercy. Foothills of the Milky Mountains. Hate to tell you, bro, but the winter is not exactly over. <clears throat> 700 years ago, you and the other Kuros took the field of the drowsy deep to prevent a great calamity, the reaping. Your self-sacrifice should have destroyed all the reapers once and for all. Nine years ago, you began feeling a gra growing sense of unease and decided to roam Terminum to find the reason. A month ago, you met a temple guard in the in the town of Gordine, there was something peculiar about him. Feeling a long forgotten sense of dread, you realized that it was an Umbra Reaper in disguise. He noticed you, too, but chose not to pursue. He merely winked at you, bowing in jest. The return of Umbra forewarns the impending Reapering. So you head to the Milky Mountains to find the local Cirrus. You hope to learn the time and place of the coming reaping, and prevent it. When you stepped onto the narrow path, you noticed several steps of footprints. At the time, you thought that other people seeking the Sirius' advice, Sirius' advice, 
must have anticipated you, but no, they are just robbers looking for an easy target. <clears throat> Time to act! Blue tiles indicate where your character can move during your current turn, orange tiles indicate extra moving distance, your character must spend some, e uh, some energy to move there. Okay. Okay, quick strike. Oh man. <clears throat> We can do health or energy damage. We need to do health damage here. Alright. Go, however you called. <clears throat> One guy's dead. Oh, he's coming in. Oh no, he's not coming in. He has a ranged weapon. Uh, damaging an enemy's energy uh, reduces their options because faster movement and power skills require energy to execute. Moreover, if enemy has zero energy remaining, double damage will be dealt to health instead of energy. This enemy has a lot of health but only 5 points of energy, so I should damage its energy. Um, what? Okay, we're doing quick strike on your health. I mean, <coughs> energy. There you have it. Hope you like it. Uh, sure. I don't want to learn about your abilities. At all. Come on. No, 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 no. Skip tutorial. Actually, never mind that. I'm supposed to go there? Okay. <clears throat> I'll just figure it out myself. Red and you telling me. Uh, let's just do energy damage here. If this uh, fight, if these fights slow down the game way too much, then I'll choose to skip them. <clears throat> we'll see. You're about to knock on the hot door when it suddenly flung open. A woman appears on the doorstep. Your heart leaps from your chest. She's one you left behind when you went to fight in the battle for the drowsy deep. She's the one you loved. Ama. <clears throat> oh, Hopper Ruli. <clears throat> Hopper Ruli? What a name. <clears throat> Lance, <clears throat> what took you so long? It's been 702 years. You managed to survive when 12 of your brethren perished. Did you go into hiding? Holy crap! You were avoiding your loved one, Ama, for like 702 years? You must have one hell of an excuse. <clears throat> wow! Please call me Hopper. I'm already used to my new name. I was called Blance when we were together. I wasn't hiding in that battle, you know. I was wounded. Pierced by arrows. That's why I didn't complete my task. So, you know that you didn't contact her for like 702 years? You know, I, I got things to do, like I was, uh, uh, whatever. Also call me Hopper now. <clears throat> yeah, I, I heard the legend of the 12 brave ones who cast an enhancement on themselves and turned into stone. They achieved their goal, now their land is free from the plague and the reaping. The price was too high, though, if you ask me. Why did you come looking for me again? I wasn't searching for you, but the locals see us. There are signs. Bastions are leaving the fortress of the Tura. The Vandil Witch has been sighted on the woodland trails. I stumbled upon a track in Gordian myself. They have returned. Another reaping is nigh, perhaps. That's a foolish question, Hopper. I do not foretell the obvious. You might as well have asked whether winter will follow autumn. The reaping is coming, you know it. All loose ends shall be tied. Uh, <clears throat> what do you mean tied? One day, the final reaping will come. The question is, if there will be anything left in, in this world afterwards. Why would you care though? Aren't you immortal? Well, I, I guess, but I can die too. <clears throat> I'm the same as you, Ama. Even if we are both Umbra, we have long embraced the human way of life. And I care about Terminum's fate. 
To the reaping, we are no more than specks of dust. This time we don't have 12 comrades willing to sacrifice themselves. Among those still alive, some will succumb and become reapers themselves. Do you really want to get involved? I need to stop the reapings. It's my fault they're happening again. You need to get off your pedestal. We are maggots, the lowliest servants lucky enough to be seated at the dining table. Are you looking for the forsaken gods of this land? I have a book that describes the life of one. Here, take a look. I had a good laugh reading this nonsense. Thank you for the book. <laughs> I've been searching high and low for similar records, but still, when and where will the reaping begin? I need to be there. That's where I'm needed. I know it. The souls of the dead have tortured me with guilt of for 700 years. Help me. Damn. <clears throat> well, it's not exactly no one, is it? <laughs> Give me the knife you keep in your bag. The kind our brethren sacrifice themselves with. Give it to me, and you get your answer. Wow, that's quite the assumption. That he still has that knife. I kind of lost it. I left it in a bar. <laughs> Pity. I really hope to use it. I doubt anything else can kill a reaper. Well, here you go. But why do you want it? <clears throat> the reaping shall occur on the day of vernal equinox, both in the north and the south, in the towns Wooden and Albius. I wouldn't waste time if I were you. Wow. You know? <clears throat> Sadly, I don't have time to reach the north. Farewell. I hope our paths cross again, though you still haven't told me why you need the knife. I saw you kill me with this very knife, Hopper. So, I hope our paths never cross again. <gasps> so, you killed your loved one, didn't talk to her 702 years, in, in 702 years, you renamed yourself Hopper, and also stab her with a knife. How the hell did that happen? Why are you guys are so friendly? What happened? You were just like going out for a snack in the middle of the night and we just just knife and like, oh, sorry about that, love. So for stabbing you accidentally. What does one need to meet old age in peace? <clears throat> Only to avoid a major disaster. Year 1002 since divine retribution. Burkana, the kingdom of Odala, city of Albius. Mm, Albius. The spring equinox. Eighth year of peace since the last war. Well, that's not a long time. A retired captain of the guard and his daughter are strolling through the festival market. <laughs> Oh, all these lady voices. How do I do it? This is most bizarre. A woman in strange clothes is walking away from the town hall. Her beauty should be turning heads, but I seem to be the only one noticing her. Why that is? So, this is the town of Albius on the spring equinox, and uh, Ama foretold that Wooden and, and uh, <coughs> Albius will the, be the one that's gotta see the reaping? What are you daydreaming again? You nod your daughter as you see Baron Trouble, the burgomaster of the town, approach you. <clears throat> Good day, Torn. How are you, Gleda? I take it that there's a reason you have been combing the market since dawn. Looking for a gift for Leaky? Huh. Are you choosing a sacrifice for the feast? I didn't know. Yeah, are you? <clears throat> Nothing has changed here. My death would do these citizens a favor. Some cannot wait for the day. 
I hope the paper rope will tear, just as it did last year. Strubble smiles at your joke, then nods and continues his stroll. Well, we got carried away and are no closer to picking a gift for Leaky. <clears throat> what are we going to give her? Will you give me a hint? What would your mother like? In the dialogue window, this icon means that your choice will have far-reaching consequences. So we could give her jewelry, clothing, and Mac coming to visit. Is the Mac the... Our neighbor? Alright. Let's just go with Mac. Oh. Okay. I got it. <clears throat> they say there is trouble on the borders, so your brother is really busy. I hope at least he finds the time to send his mother a letter. Oh. A brother. Uh, by the way, th the show, or the kind of conversation options I, I chose in my other uh, attempt at this game, but I, I didn't really go into it. I was, I was, uh, okay. I went to like half an hour at most. <clears throat> Let's see what kind of game it is. I hope so too. He would have have known what to give her for her birthday. I'm sure you can manage on your own. Yeah, I'm just gonna make it your responsibility. That's right. <clears throat> Not sure how this is gonna... Well, I don't know. Could have far-reaching consequences. Uh, well, let's just talk to Gleda. Was there something you wanted to discuss? I know what mom really needs. Health. For her aching heart. Is there any way to improve her health, magic, divine intervention? I do not believe in magic. The gods, it seems, do not even help their own servants. Do you remember what their temple is called? The Temple of Divine Retribution. It would be silly to expect any help from them. If we, I wish I knew why they had an, to exact this retribution on your mother. Then we... Then we should content ourselves with what the marketplace has to offer. And I shall win tomorrow's fencing tournament in her honor. Do you really think she will take pleasure in watching her daughter hurl herself at another's blade? Even if it's a practice sword? I'm better fighting than anyone who signed up. Do not get too full of yourself. Your regiment buddies, Sop, Brat and Hode. And no worse. At least not by much. In any case, you should direct your attention away from all those weapons to say... Dresses or shawls. Also, the name is Torn Brennan and... Gleda. Gleda Brennan. <clears throat> Alright, let's go and buy something. Ah, uh, I... So, we can't go and buy jewelry or buy some clothes. This is the perfect time to buy some sexy clothing. My my uh, daughter is gonna help me pick it for her mother. Is this an inappropriate? I don't know. I think it's totally appropriate. <clears throat> you make your way to the cloth merchant and find the stall practically blocked from view by the portly figure of the money changer's wife. She's a quarrelsome woman and obviously unhappy about some someone invading her space. I'm just gonna be a nice guy. Greet the woman politely. The woman nods to you curtly, no longer showing frustration. She strides away uh, toward the town gates and disappears among the merchant's stalls. Nice to see you, Captain! What have you done, my friend? Have you... You, you just lost me a client? I swear I was this close to taking the fortress? <clears throat> Not every word, fortress is worth besieging. I don't know. I just I just can't help but choose the the, the conversation options that I like. Hey. 
Your words, your words ring true, my friend. However, since you've rid me of one client, perhaps you would like to pick something for yourself? Yeah. Gladys is gonna be the one who picks. <clears throat> We're looking for a shawl or a handkerchief. The best that you have. Gladys, this is not what we talked about, goddammit. Are you too embarrassed to say that we're looking for some sexy clothes? Or maybe just some dresses, at least. Shawl or handkerchief? Are you kidding me? <clears throat> you would not believe, Patagang, how happy I am to see my daughter looking at shawls and handkerchiefs, not choosing another blade or an ancient parchment. Sometimes I think I've got two sons. Come on. It's a good thing that you're daughter knew, knows how to defend herself. <clears throat> Dad, I can hear you. Also, don't think that history and fencing are not meant for girls. Max has gone to the capital and become a baronet. I also want to become somebody. Hey. Your brother has become a baronet, you say? Wonderful news! Please give my congratulations to your mother. <clears throat> I, sh I surely will. Actually, she's feeling better today. Good cheer turned out to be more powerful than the healer's gimmicks. Is that so? Have you heard of the lady healer from Arsis? Her talent is the talk of Burkana. We have already visited the men here in Arsis. The healer was not home at the time. They say she and her daughter could be wandering elsewhere for years. I couldn't exactly sleep on her doorstep, could I? Damn. These times. They're not at home? Well, I guess better try it in a few years. Uh, but enough of that. You said something about shawls. Let us choose them. Huh? What kind of fabric are you looking for? Raiden and wool? Baldarian silk? I have something cheap. Um, pff, no. I'll take the silk one, okay? You unstring your purse and settle with Padagang. Then you neatly fold the silk handkerchief and pass it to Gleda. As you're about to leave, the low sound of a bell fills the marketplace. Startled, sellers and buyers alike stare in the direction of the town hall. <clears throat> if only you had seen the pretty lady I just spotted earlier. She was almost as beautiful as your daughter. She went straight into the town hall. Could it be that her beauty drove our bell ringer crazy? Or did he drink himself silly again? The bear ringer has outdone himself this time. He's not late. He started early. Doesn't that bell sound strange to you? It's almost like it's screaming. Suddenly all around you're, you're all around you citizens start to collapse. You turn around, grab Gleda by the hand and run towards the town hall together. What? Why not just run out of town? I know you were used to be a a guard, but come on. Oh, the death metal band. They're not gone. They're the same guy. <clears throat> you see Baron Trouble lying on the ground, dying. Blood gushes from his mouth, nose, and ears, and eyes. Ooh, how does a. Uh death metal guy sound like <clears throat> you are tough you struggle to stay on your feet blood is gushing from your nose Gleda scared to death is hiding behind your back but rather take a turn take a turn really what is that supposed to mean I don't even know who the hell are you no need for you to know you use the last reserves of your energy to stay upright. Your heart is about to leap out of your chest. Your throat contracts. Dying already? <laughs> no, I'm going to live a bit longer. No, leave, leave my da daughter alone. That's it. No, I don't need either of you yet. Towering over you, the monster examines you intently for a few seconds and extends its arms and points at your pendant. Don't lose it. You'll need it. The reaping will start with your family. 
Thorn Brennan. The monster vanishes into thin air. You shake your head, trying to to clear it. <laughs> oh, blessed gods! Did you hear what it said about our family? Quick, we gotta get home. What can we do? We need to just get the hell out of here. I like the loading screen, but it could have like more going on. Like I wouldn't mind just a picture instead of just like complete darkness. Come on, scary guys. You run headlong to your house, taking every possible shortcut. Even a small town like Obvious has its dark corners, but you could not care less. Right now, you need to make sure that everything's alright at home. Glada's outcry makes you stop in your tracks. Your daughter's your daughter hastily pulls some kind of colored plagues from her from under her belt. That, that's what almost burned my stomach! Ras gave them to me about a week ago. A long time ago, they supposedly they were they supposedly were magical battle cards. Suddenly, they became so hot to the touch. Check out the cards. So, like turn-based combat with some cards. <clears throat> the magical plaques almost burn your fingers, but they also fit perfectly in your hand. You feel almost as if you could wave your hand and channel magic into any enemy. Could they regain their power because of the reaping? How did Rask come by them? You remember seeing such plaques sold as curiosities and souvenirs. You hear footsteps coming from somewhere ahead. Three thugs are barring the way. Their puffy faces are contorted with mindless rage. Did Highwaymen get so brazen as to attack Townsfolk, hoping for an easy gain? In a swift move, you draw your sword, but the thugs look unimpressed. You look closer and notice their vacant eyes and foam at their mouths. Your opponents are either very drunk or crazy. You step in front of Glada. I beat some sense into them. You stay back. In response, Glada steps aside and draws her own blade. Did I practice with a sword for all those years just to keep hiding behind you? Together, we'll deal with them faster. What your daughter is really asking for is some stern parenting, but the thugs attack you with feral roar. You can only hope your daughter has taken your lessons to heart. Uh, yeah. I, I think I can figure out how to click on characters. God damn it. Click on the icon on the bottom left to use a card. Each card has a number that shows in which round it will become available. Each card can be used once per battle. After you use a card, it won't be available again until the next battle. Red skulls next to a character portrait indicate the number of wounds that the character has sustained. The character's stats are lowered, depending on the number of wounds. If a character sustains four wounds, they die. Keep an eye out for this useful button. It can be found throughout the game. Click it to read descriptions of various game mechanics. Okay, so they both have combined 60 or so. Well, Glad actually has more health. So we can position. Okay, let's say I'm ready. Who starts? My turn. Oh, I can I can check out the cards. Touch of Chaos. Reduces health by 5 to a random enemy and increases energy by 2 to all party members. Increases attack to a random party member. Increases defense by 10. Health by 10. Health by... To reduced. And as far as I know, this these end your turn. Okay, I'm gonna give Gladys some armor. I... I believe that's damage reduction. Yeah, it ends your turn, so they're gonna act now. Yeah, she took zero damage. So defense is is very strong. It's my turn. So it wasn't like... I don't know. It would be nice to know the turn order, but it definitely costs an action. To use the items. So, Glado has 9 damage. Uh, Torn has a 7 damage. <clears throat> and we got different abilities. We can deal 7 damage and push an enemy back 
increases my counter attack by 7. So we just attack back for 7. Increase the defense by 3, which is not that much. But I suppose it keeps you safe. We should try to not get wounded. We got a special ability. Increase the attack by 1 and energy by 2 to all party members when this character dies. That has to be the, the stupidest special skill ever. When this character dies. And it's also a very minor uh, buff by what I can tell. Because they have 7. When it dies. And Gledas is increases your health by 11 when you kill an enemy. That's that's okay. But also she has different attacks. She can deal... Yeah, she can deal... 9 damage. She can also deal... More damage. I suppose that could only could make sense if we are maybe finishing us of this guy. Can we just get our health back? Yeah, we did. We did. So we did lose four HP for that. I don't know if I wanna. Reduce his health, reduce his attack. Let's reduce. Oh, what? Reduce the attack by 5 and increase the attack by 1 to all surrounding units. Oh, I see. We need to be close to Bowie. Energy, give us energy. So how does this work? Uh, am I supposed to play it on him? Uh, okay, I don't know. He doesn't have a target. So we did that. Glado has now extra attack. This guy has doesn't have a lot of energy. So Tornbred in. Still, still yet to act. Maybe playing cards doesn't... What is this? Increase your attack by one, increase your defense by one. Okay, but it actually costs you a turn. Increase your defense of a party member by six. Okay. That's, that's a good way to defend Gleda. Uh, that makes some sense. All right. <laughs> Hate to tell you this, pops, but you're really not that great. Okay. That heavy strike is insane. Why? Why would I do that? Can, I, can we just kill this guy? We can't really. Increase your energy by four. And all damage received is dealt to health. Okay. These do not end the turn. But I guess I can select it. Maybe I should just take out this guy. Well, we're not killing him right off the, right away, so might as well start with that. It's his turn now. Took some damage. Deal 14 damage to health on all surrounding units. Oh, we would actually deal damage to Gleda as well. Let's go there. This is a good skill. Oh, it has a high, high cooldown. Yeah, 14 damage, pushes them back, increases your defense. This is this this skill is insane. You want to use this? How do we do that? Okay, double click. He's not even dead. Uh oh, I don't like the look of that. It's 
So the blue squ squares cost me increasing my energy. Damage received is dealt to health. Okay, evenly spread. And we're just gonna take out this guy, doesn't matter. Yeah, we're getting big our health. She's a vampire. Don't die, man. Okay. Yes, his armor. He's not gonna die. Glad I can't act anymore. Uh, I guess I'm just gonna hit his energy. Come, patient. What now? Can I just take him out? Easy. Not quite, but I don't want to do a heavy attack that actually kills her for some reason. Doesn't matter. Let's just kill this guy. <clears throat> Clara looks at the blooded bodies in terror. This is the first time she has fought to the death. You grab her by the shoulders, shaking her a couple of times before she looks away from the corpses. She finally steals herself, meets your gaze and nods with great determination. You are proud of your daughter, but even more so, worried for your wife Leaky. There is no time to lose. You need to get home as soon as possible. A couple of side alleys later, you open the familiar gate. Okay. Maybe this is a good time to end the, uh, the first part. And we're gonna save my wife next time. So thanks for watching and see you next time.